hi everyone welcome back to my channel and my kitchen and if you're new here i just want to welcome you to my kitchen and my channel and i hope you'll enjoy your little stay here first of all my name is Juliette kane and i post recipes every wednesday on youtube and on my blog so you can check both out maybe you'll see something you like i'll put a playlist of all my recipes here and today we are going to be making something with two ingredients that i really like we are going to be using pineapple and pork so basically what we are making today is oven grilled pineapple marinated pork ribs which i'm pretty sure you guys will love because i love so much before we get into the recipe i just want to talk about using pineapples in meat marinades for a quick minute so the reason i'm using pineapples in this recipe is one i want to impact the sweet and tangy flavor of pineapples into meat which goes really well with pork sometimes fish and even beef and secondly pineapple is a really good natural meat tenderizer so i did a bit of research and pineapples have enzymes called bromelain which they naturally break down proteins and in that way when you use them as a marinade for meat they help break down the toughness and the protein in meat so by the time you get to cooking your meat your meat is already tender you don't need to cook it for hours to get the tenderness and also you get the flavor of the sweetness and the stickiness in the ribs and i've seen there are other fruits that you can use which have the same enzyme and the most popular one is really papaya i've seen some people using papaya in meat marinades and they also have the same enzyme that helps to break down and other things that you can use as natural meat tenderizers in your meat especially for chicken and fish you can use something that has acid like lemons vinegar yogurt for these small small meats akina chicken and akina fish but for these other ones akina beef you need something that's a bit stronger to help break down the meat and make it more tender so it's a win-win because first you get good good i mean the good flavor of pineapples and secondly you get very tender meat and i think it's a very good alternative to using store-bought meat tenderizer so with that said we can get into the recipe and i'll show you the ingredients how i marinated or before we get into that i just want to mention whenever you're using fruits maybe papaya and pineapple to marinate specifically meat make sure you don't mar marinate it for too long because at, as it break, breaks down the proteins you might end up with mushy meat because it breaks down too much so i would advise maybe 12 hours if you really have to you can go up to 24 hours but don't marinate it for too long because you'll end up with the mush before you cook it so yeah let's get into it let me show you guys the ingredients and the process of marination and then finally we'll put it in the oven i'm also planning on making a quick slaw because of the intensity of the flavors in the pork we need something fresh that will make the whole dish lighter we're going to be making a pineapple and chili marinade for the pork so i'm going to be starting with about two cups of pineapple have some fresh ginger and garlic so I've just chopped it roughly because I'm going to blend two tablespoons of coriander about a teaspoon of salt of course you're going to be using some black pepper paprika chili flakes and you're also going to be using thyme we are going to be adding some soy sauce some dark soy sauce and a bit of vinegar i always put all the measurements of the ingredients in my written recipe which i will link down below so you can go check it out there i'll also be adding about a glass of water to help with the blending And I'm going to cover this and put this in the fridge for at least 4 hours to 24 hours. And for this marinade, I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to use it to make the sauce. So that's why I prefer to make a lot of it because it's also going to be the sauce for the ribs. Um, so here we have my marinated ready. I always like to use 180 degrees as a standard um, 
like temperature for most of my recipes but and what i like to do as like mazoya is to preheat my oven even if i'm not baking a cake so as that preheat i'm going to put my meat on my my tray the pork i'm using is not too fatty so i'm going to start by greasing the bottom of my rack my tray and then my meat has been marinating for about let's say six maybe six eight hours and i'm just going to remove it from the marinade and place it on the tray the reason i like to cover this with aluminium foil is because it will cook without drying out and towards the end when i have a sauce I will remove the aluminium foil, increase the heat to let it broil so that now it can get, get that um, nice char and crust on top. But for now I want to cook it in the aluminium foil so that it doesn't dry out. So as the pork ribs cook, we'll be working on the sauce and a slow. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is because I like garlic, we're going to start with two cloves of garlic in a pan. And then I hope you didn't throw away the marinade we had made earlier because that's what we are going to be using for the sauce. We're going to be adding a few things but this is going to be the main thing that goes in the sauce. All the flavors are here, all the meaty flavors, the pineapple, the spices, everything is here so you shouldn't throw this away because this will make a really nice sauce. Now to make sure that I got everything in this bowl I added some water because this is going to thicken up anyway. And before I cover this, I'm going to be adding one heaped tablespoon of tomato paste. And I'm also going to be adding about one cup of ketchup. So my sauce is very thick at this point. And I'm going to be adding a few things. So I've just tasted it. And I feel like the sugar isn't enough yet. So I'm just going to add maybe one tablespoon. At this point what I'm doing is adjusting the sauce to what I like and personally I like the combination of sweet and, um, and salty and chili so I'm also going to be adding some soy sauce just to darken it a bit and to get that earthy flavor that soy sauce has and then I'm also going to be adding some more chili flakes because I feel like the chili is not enough and finally to finish off some black pepper So I have the ingredients of the coastal over here, some cabbage, some carrots, um, ho ho, some pineapple and, the, and some onions. And what I like to do is soak the onions in water and add a bit of vinegar just to get rid of that pungent smell and taste of the onions. So I'm just going to add some vinegar. If you don't have vinegar, I always use salted water and then I'll rinse afterwards. So I'll leave this to soak for a while as I work on the rest. And I'm just going to mix them together. So the ho ho, the pineapple. And then I'm going to grate this into this. Our meat is pretty much done at this point, but we want all this sauce, saucy goodness to go on it. So I'm just going to apply this sauce and take it back into the oven on very high heat for just five minutes to allow the sauce to get darker and to cook and to have some sort of a maybe crust and char on top so that's all that's remaining I don't want to have it in the oven for too long because I don't want to have it in the oven too long because the meat is already cooked and if we continue to cook it for too long then it will end up being a whole dry mess also, whenever I'm making such things where I'm making meat, I like to make a large batch of sauce because you can always store this in the fridge and then use it for other things. Like the next time you're making a stew, you can put like two tablespoons because this has a lot of flavor. Just remember all the things we marinated this meat in. All those flavors, the next time you're making meat stew, stir fry, fried rice, you can always pick like two tablespoons and put it in. It's always a good idea to make a big batch. So I'm just waiting for five minutes for my ribs to come out and then I will dig in. And I plan on having this with garlic because of all the intense flavors, I need something to bring that to a nice place. And then with my slow, super excited.
now that I'm finally done, I can finally remove this apron. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for getting to this part of the video. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share with your friends. And as usual, I always leave a written recipe down in the description for anyone who would like to go and see the measurements and the process. And if you prefer a written recipe, then it's always down in the description box. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a lovely week. See you next week. Bye.